Our unity brings in relationship with Christ and his body, which releases the effectual operation of diversities of the gifts of God, which is in uh, Ephesians 7. I read to you there, a unmerited favor given to each of us individually, not indiscriminately, but in different ways. How I many know God gives us each a measure, a measure of our responsibility in proportion to the measure of Christ's rich and bounteous, bounteous gifts. So God gives every one of us unique gifts and, and parts. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive. He led a train of vanquished foes, and he bestowed gifts on men. But he ascended. Now, what can this he ascended mean, but that he also previously descended from the heights of the heaven into the depths and low, lower parts of the earth? And he who uh, descended is the very, uh, very same as he who also ascended high above all the heavens, and, in, and he, his presence, might fill all things the whole universe from the lowest to the highest. Can you see that? And it talks about here, uh, the, the important piece here is that, uh, and, and it talks about all the gifts, and his gifts are varied. Everybody has different gifts. Everybody has unique, different gifts. Can you hear that? But let me stop. That's, that's what I want you to look at, and that's what we're going to try to pick at a little bit as we finish this up. Psalm 56, verse 5. I'm reading now the New uh, Living Translation, Angela. Uh, it says something really important. The number one demonic spirit that fights prayer and fights the prayer of Jesus for us to be one, the number one demonic spirit that fights against us becoming one is the spirit of Leviathan. The number one spirit that fights unity in the church not uniformity. I'm not talking about an ecumenical gathering of a, a bunch of different religions coming together. Look, we might solve a social I issue on that, but I have no fellowship in that. You better hear me. We might solve a social issue on that. We might be able to solve some social things that helps the community, whether it's working with girls, men, uh, whether it's working with drugs, uh, people are on drugs, all that. I'm for it. I've been doing it for, I had 14,000 men in my home here. We've had over 1,200 babies born in, in this house right over here. 1,200 babies. I don't just talk about trying to help. We do. That's why you want to come to the block party meeting. Now, in that process, it's imperative that you catch this. There is a spirit now, this spirit has been around for thousands of years and is all through your Bible. It's in the Old Testament. Leviathan. You'll see it in a minute. I'm taking the time to show it to you because it's the spirit that fights oneness in the church. It's not afraid of an ecumenical gathering, but its, it's fear is oneness that comes in Christ. And as I read, or I was going to read to you, uh, and that's what happens now. This Leviathan spirit comes, and he twists what God is saying. He is the spirit of separation. If you're a note taker, write it down. Leviathan is the spirit of separation. His, his Hebrew word is the word twister. Leviathan twist the truth. Uh, how many of you understand now? Leviathan is referred to, and historians tell us, it was probably one of the crocodiles of the Nile. That's where they got the word because in the Nile there used to be big, big crocodiles. My wife and I have been to African places and seen crocodiles that were 20 foot, 18 foot, 15 foot. We watched them creep along the water banks while we sat up on a little cliff uh, and deer were down at the edge of the water drinking and these crocodiles just come right up. You can't even see them, but up top you can. And next thing you know, they open their mouth and grab the face of the deer, pull them in the water, roll over and over and over and over and over. It's called the death twist or the death uh, curl. And when they do that, they drown them and they kill them. And so in the spiritual realm, and I'll show you the scriptures for it, especially in the book of Job, and we might not get too far, but I want to get you looking in that direction. This spirit always manage to show up in the church and twist the truth. Are you hearing me now? Uh, 
Psalm 56, verse 5, in the New Living Translation, David said, they are always twisting my words. Remember, it started in the garden. The serpent said in uh, Genesis 3, 4, 5, did God really mean what he said? You won't die if you eat the fruit of that tree. You see, that little bit of doubt is what causes people to stop believing. That's that little seed. It's like a mustard seed. It's just a little seed, and it causes people to go, well, maybe, or maybe, you know, okay, it could be, maybe. And they start backing away from the truth. And, and, and look, I've had times where I'll sit with somebody, tell them exactly what I know, what I hear, what I think, and they'll go out, and somehow the, the conversation gets twisted. I mean, you know what happens in marriages. You say something, the other person hears it a certain way. And the whole idea is to separate. Paul said in Romans, what can separate me from the love of God? Can things present, things to come, powers, principalities? Uh, uh, what can separate? There's a separating spirit that wants to separate the church. Because the enemy knows if the church becomes one, we become like a big nuclear bomb. We are, we are collectively so powerful. One puts a 1,000 to flight. Two puts 10,000 to flight. There's an ecumenical explosion that happens. Uh, when you and I join together in one, we begin to become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. But when you're isolated, when you're in rebellion because you just want to do your own thing, you become a prey to the Leviathan. My wife will tell you, remember that one that came along in Africa that day? We could see in the muddy water. We could see down. We saw this beast, 18, 20 foot. The deer didn't see him. But we could see because we were up high, we could see him going along. He was just going dun, 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 like Jaws, you know. Dun, 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 dun. He was coming along. And, and I wanted to go, hey! <laughs> it's the little dumb deer, you know, they got real weird legs. They have to put them out like this. Yeah. So does the giraffe. Yeah. The giraffe is awkward, you know. He's got his legs all over the place out there trying to get his neck down there. And that little guy, come, he, was, he was like two feet away from the nose of this deer. Then he was like eight inches away. And the deer couldn't see him. And we wanted to go, hey! <laughs> Lunch. How many understand? The enemy is so subtle. He just sneaks up. And all of a sudden, you know, prophet says, well, we should do this. And somebody says, well... I don't know if he was really saying that. I heard Bishop say, well, I'm not sure if he's, he was saying, twist, twist, twist. Watch. I'm going to close. Watch. Isaiah 27, 1. In that day, the Lord will deliver Israel from her enemies and also from the rebel powers of evil and darkness. His sharp and unrelenting great and strong sword will visit and punish Leviathan. Then the swiftly fleeing serpent, Leviathan, the twisting and winding serpents, he will slay the monster that is in the sea. The sea is the humanity. Remember the mena, it, it, it mean the meaning of this word, the monster Leviathan, it means the twister. Do you see that in Isaiah? Yeah. The dragon uh, is that monster, is that uh, crocodile, is that one called Leviathan. And pride is the door opener for him to take hold. Here's the last scripture I'm going to give you because I'm not going to be able to talk to you about it. I've got to come back to it. Listen, the last hundred years, the Spirit has been called on through 
the practices of the occult and Satanism worldwide now, worldwide, uh, uh, he, he, this thing has been brought, this, this spirit of, of Leviathan has been brought in to bring chaos and curses on nations. Job ran into it. Job ran into it. How I many you hear that? He ran into it. And when he did, uh, wow. If you read in Job chapter 41, verse 34, how do you know he's the king? He's the king, he's the monarch over the children of pride. He's the monarch. <laughs> Anybody listening? There's a monarch issue today. Hello. Oh, there's a monarch issue today. And there's a spirit that's come in their midst. Oh, there's a monarch issue today. Are you hearing me? And we need to get this. There's a monarch issue today. And I want you to look. Watch this. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I, I wish I had the time, but we're gone. Uh, uh, Job chapter 41 and in verse um, verse 25 when the crocodile rises himself up the mighty are afraid because of terror and the crashing they are beside themselves that means that thrashing of this this massive crocodile with its prey in verse 34 he looks almighty beast of prey in the face Without terror, he is a monarch. He is a king over all the sons of pride. Look at it. And now, Job, who are you who dares not arouse the unmastered crocodile? The spirit, look, y'all all know about Jezebel, don't you? How many of you heard about Jezebel? We wore her out. So God has told me to bring and introduce you to another demon because you've gotten so comfortable, comfortable with Jezebel, you just know, I know Jezebel, I know all about Jezebel. You don't because many times you entertain her. But this new one here, Leviathan, you need to get introduced with that thing because that thing will come in and seduce you and cause the twisting of God's word where you don't even know what the truth really is. Look what it says. He looks almighty beast of prey in the face without terror. In other words, he can look right at God himself just like Lucifer and say, I want to be like the Most High God. Look at it. And he says, without terror, he is a monarch. He's a king, little k, over all the sons of pride. And now, Job, who are you who dares not arouse the unmastered crocodile, yet who dares insist me, resist me, I'm sorry, of the beast uh, uh, creator to my face, Everything under the heaven is mine. Therefore, who can have a claim against God? Here's what happened. God and Job had a conversation. God kind of had with this little short little Jew guy. And God said, where were you? Where were you, you little shriveled up? Where were you? When I created everything that is, when I took my hands and dug out the valleys and made the oceans, where were you at? He's, he's taught, see, why did Job lose everything? He lost his children. He lost his farm, his animal. He lost his position. He lost his health. He lost everything. Why do people suffer so much? I want to tell you something. When your pride tells you that you can go and fix yourself, you're lining up for that thing to be a trick from hell. Because God made you as a child to trust him to do miracles that your doctor can't do. But you go to the doctor first before you turn to him. So he just folds his hand and says, okay, after you go to the doctor and the doctor can't put Humpty Dumpty back together again, come see me. And he told Job, he said, Job, what were you, you little runt? He said, what are you doing? You should be dealing with this monster. 
and you should be correcting this thing. How do you hear me today? Yeah. How do you know, saints? We're living in a day where the church, God's ecclesia, needs to know that God is for us, God is with us. Amen. But we're part of a, a body. We have to be connected. We have to be united. We have to be in one accord. Hello? Because that Leviathan spirit, and I'm going to read it to you some more. You don't even know. I haven't even begun to touch that thing. When you start seeing where it shows up, the first place you need to put down here today is that thing shows up in pride. What is pride? Pride is that humanistic characteristic that says, I can't. Subliminally saying, without God. I read my Bible, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I need God in my life. I need God to strengthen me. Hello? I watched the Ravens get killed last night, and I kind of wonder if maybe Leviathan slipped in there yeah. and maybe got it so that you begin to think you are what you've been reading on the paper. Yeah. The minute you begin to read your own press and begin to think you're something, you better be careful, lest you become the butt end of the joke instead of yeah. stand your feet today and say, Lord, thank you. You're going to show us the monster that wants to kill the church. Thank you for watching Rock City Church Online. We pray this video sharpens and encourages you to be all that God has called you to be. You can give online at rockcitychurch.com or on the Rock City Church app. Like and share us on social media at Rock CC Baltimore. And subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next episode or live stream.